Hello and welcome back to the Nast Metal Production Channel here at YouTube. Welcome to the very first episode of 80s German Hard and Heavy. So, to kick off this episode, we're going to kick it off with a bang. we got about three pretty much obscure German uh, bands, basically. Um, on All of them are pretty much from the early 80s. Uh, so we basically have two albums that was released in 1982, with only one album released in 1981. So without further ado, let's get in. First album, though, is, is only on CD because of I'm not going to pay the, the price uh, that an original goes for. This, of course, is Black Dragon, uh, of course, with their debut album and only album, Heavy Metal Intoxication. Now, this, of course, is a CD reissue on uh, Cathargo Records. Uh, pretty much uh, has both a non-remastered and remastered version of the album on one disc. This was 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 of course was uh, released independently. Therefore, why copies go for the the price that it does on the internet? Uh, sound wise, it it's a good album. It's not an amazing um, record. Definitely not from uh, for Germany or anything. But it's definitely at times a pretty fun hard rock slash metal album. Uh, some of the best songs off here for me are definitely a Tonal Attention, uh, No Nomination, a Rocking Movie Star, Here We Are, and of course New York City Run. Uh, even the beginning uh, track, the Born for Solution is great. Definitely has some ACDC and Motorhead influences for sure on this album. Uh, so with, uh, of course again production, raw and everything. So without further ado, uh, let's get into a sample so you guys uh, can check this out. So with that, I'm going to be getting into the next album. So with that, enjoy. Finally, and in, into some vinyl, and again, some pretty obscure ones. Next one is definitely obscure for sure, but this is also probably the most raunchiest of the German albums that, or any of my albums in general that I have in my collection. And I have the Demon Pact album, or that Demon Pact CD, whatever. That's of course is Deep Throat, with of course our only record titled. The Devil and Miss Jones, all of course being named after, well, it, does it have to be self-explanatory? Do, do I have to say it, it, it's always self-explanatory? With that, again, their only record uh, released, of course, on the Orum label. Um, definitely an obscure title for sure, but this is also one of the more kind of surprisingly more known within the obscure German um, early metal camp. Uh, definitely for this artwork for sure, uh, which definitely had caught my eye years ago when I first saw it on Vibration of Doom within their classic album section. Um, as far as this album uh, as to get it, it is not an easy record to get unless you want to pay the 30, 40, or 70 bucks that it goes for me. I was lucky enough to only pay 20 off of Amazon. But good luck trying to find a copy at that price again. With that, uh, definitely a raunchy record for sure, though lyrically again. But if you can get past some of the lyrics on this album, musically, it is definitely a fun uh, rockin' record. 
uh, pretty much the title track is very much a speed metal track and there's about three on here basically being the title track uh, Jack the Ripper which it's definitely no The Ripper but it is a fun track, but the reason they chose the song is because of, if you looked into the killer's history, he mostly killed prostitutes. Yeah, kind of fits with the whole image and of this band. And of course, then the third and last speed metal track on the album is, of course, uh, the song, I think it's called like Rock and Roll Star, I think. Something like that. And just a fuck, uh, just... One of the fastest songs, also. It's like, uh, there, there, there's been some speed metal songs recent this year. Fuck. Fast as a Shark Pack, except it was released the same year. But, in terms of fast, this track is fucking fast. One of the most fastest songs that was probably released at this time. Even uh, when it comes to rock and roll songs, it's even faster than Rocker from ACDC. It's fucking fast. So... Again, there, there's plenty of good rockers on this album, but without further ado, so I can, because I only want, want to talk about at least 30 or 40 or 50 minutes at least of an album on these videos, because I'm just going to let the music do the talking. So therefore, I'm going to head into a sample so you guys can check it, there, check it out. And if you dig it, definitely look out for a copy for sure. But if it's not uh, due to the lyrics or whatever, thing, it's understandable. So at that I'm going to put this record down and go into the next one. So with that, enjoy your sample. Third and last album from here for sure, and this one I just got recently, and this is definitely one of the main albums I really want to feature on this uh, series to begin with. This is really what started it, and this is a freaking great record from a band that practically is not completely known, but definitely when you do know about this band, you know that it's uh, the band that is best known for being the footing, uh, the footsteps or beginnings for two guitar players that would go on to play in some pretty highly co quintessential uh, speed pyramidal bands in Germany. As of course, here is their debut, Rampage, with of course, Victims of Rock, released of course on the uh, Half and Clean record label. Of course, so when talking about the uh, guitar players uh, that were in this band, we got Roland Grapple, who of course uh, ended up uh, playing with Halloween, definitely during the 90s period. And of course, the other one is Henjo something, I forgot the look at who, which of course down there you probably saw the name anyway, who of course would later on play with Gamma Ray. But... He's not on this album. Only Ro Roland Greppa was on the sound. Therefore, he was an original of Rampage. And still is one of the members here that is still alive because only two of the members in this band uh, ended up pretty much passing away. Um, what can I say about this album? This is a fucking great record. Again, released in 1981. 
you know, for there, I was pretty much would say that accepts uh, two albums from this time period being like Breaker and Resident Evil were probably the most in influential German metal albums that definitely shaped up the whole German metal sound. But fuck. I think, uh, I don't know, but this record right here is almost on par with anything that, except that released at this time. It's at times it's almost even more raw and heavier than even the first two Accept albums. Due to definitely the guitar tone and everything, this was very German metal for 1981. And by this time, you didn't really have any, any albums like uh, Gates to Purgatory, or you didn't really have any albums like uh, Back for Attack, or um, any of the Tyrant albums from this time frame. You didn't really have a whole lot of that kind of metal from in like 1981, besides the two albums from Accept, or maybe Scorpions. But this record is definitely German metal sounding, and, and to be quite honest, I think this record really uh, alongside except probably really shaped up that what would be that real underground German metal sound for like labels like Mausoleum or Scratch Records or uh, Hot Blood Records or Earthshaker Records or even of course uh, Noise and of course um, Steam Hammer. It just has that kind of sound. I think it really kind of really uh, for, uh, kind of shaped up that whole sound anyways. Like you're going to hear some of that like uh, a mausoleum metal sound on this record but in terms of lyrically there's a lot more thought out lyrics of course by the cover you're not going to think german metal but more crot rock and of course uh, let's even look at the back cover here being of course even more uh crot rock inspired there but musically this is pretty much a full more like a early heavy metal record this is fucking great um i to be quite honest i can't even say what is one of the best songs because almost every song of this album is pretty damn good sure though when it comes to uh the influences there is definitely that hard rock influence and there is a bit more of a uri he lucifer's friend kind of influence but mostly within like the vocal melodies and the gang vocal kind of sound uh like think for example um, stealing that that kind of sound or bird of prey, something like that. That that sort of like kind of choruses, but mixed with the sort of German metal sound. Um, of course, heavy load. But then again, um, I don't want to talk uh, too much about the sound one because I don't want to drag on too long. So with that, I'm going to play you a track off the sound, and I think the one I'm going to play you is "He's a Dancer." I know, silly title, but musically. This is a fucking burner of a song. This track rips. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this first episode. Uh, definitely look forward to an episode maybe next month or uh, per month, basically. Because I'm not, not going to do this every single week. So with that, I hope you enjoyed. So until then, this is Hippie Thrasher Sam out. And I'll see you all later. Take care, everyone. Hey.